So this is my avatar and it's my avatar on Twitter, on Medium and on YouTube. So basically everywhere. And we will be creating this animation in Flutter in this video. What is this avatar? It's pretty simple. On Stack Overflow, this is my avatar. And this is the avatar that was automatically generated when I created my profile on Stack Overflow. And if you take a look at my avatar that I use basically everywhere, you can see that it's in the background. And then on GitHub, this is my avatar. And this is also my avatar that was automatically generated when I created my profile on GitHub. And in this avatar, you can see it in the foreground here. Back when I created this, I actually did it in Photoshop. However, I do not even have the project files anymore. So I have no idea how I did it back then. However, I was able to recreate it in Flutter and I will show you how to do that in one minute. Canvas is what I created for making these custom canvas animations in Flutter. And this package is also open source. You can even take a look at the demo app if you like to. So all of this is open source and I will be using this package to create this whole animation. However, obviously we need to have a blank start to begin with. So this is as blank as you're going to get. And from this blank canvas slate, I will time one minute until we have created my avatar in Flutter. So let's go. The first thing we want to do is get the images. This is my gravatar, so my stack overflow avatar, and it's just a network image that we resize to the original size. Then my GitHub avatar, the same thing. This one we resize because it should be smaller in the center. And now we need to load the images from these image providers and then return an image. And this is done like this. It doesn't really matter, so I won't explain it here. Then we want to store these images in the constructor awaiting the future. Then if the images are not yet loaded, we want to not paint anything. However, we want to paint a white background. Now we want to get the center coordinates. Now we need paint to draw and we need a position. Now we just use the center positions. Now we draw the two images and we're done. But you see, this is not exactly how it should look like. So we need to add a blend mode. Now we need to blur the background. I'll use 11 blur, then we blur. And now last thing to do is scale this whole thing. Done. And that was one minute. <laughs> I know this was a bit fast. <laughs> Of course, uh, if I want to fit it into one minute, it will be a bit fast. Now, if you want to stay around, I will animate this in the way you saw before, and we will take some more time for that because it's obviously a bit more complex. And then I will also talk about this a little bit, right? If we compare this to our original image, this is how it looks like, right? This is pretty much it. However, it's way smoother if this is the Photoshop version and it's very noisy. I don't know if you can see this, but it's really noisy. And the version we created in Flutter here is not noisy at all. So I think I will actually just use the one I created in Flutter everywhere now. And let's get into the animation. The way I will do it is simply based on the T here. This is the time elapsed in seconds. And it's something um, that's from my Funvis package. We want to start by basically looping the animation every 10 seconds because otherwise we wouldn't see the animation and would need to do a hot restart every time. But now we can use T and it will always be 0 to 10 seconds, but it will never be 10 because we do modulo 10. We can now say that we um, alter the position and of the two images, the stack overflow and the GitHub image, and also the blur and the blend mode right? Pretty easy. Basically just uh, modify the paint. That's also why it's set up in this way. In the first second, I want to make the GitHub image come in from the left. That's why we first subtract the width. So it's all the way out on the left side. And then we kind of add it back as you can see minus and minus. So we add the width back based on the time and we ease that um, like with an ease curve. And for the stack overflow image, so the background image, 
I just don't want to show it at all. So that's why I just uh, subtract the width. So it will be just out of view. Then in the next second, so the second second, <laughs> I want to then make the GitHub, so the foreground image, go out again. In the third second, I want to make the background one, so the Stack Overflow one, come down from the top. And all of these three are more or less the same concept, so <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I need to explain that. Although you can just see I do, for example, T minus one or T minus two, because we use this if statement to only make this code block run when t is smaller than 2 but greater than or equal to 1 and this is why we subtract 1 and we will always have a value between 0 and 1 in here. Then in the fourth second I want to already apply the blend mode and then make the foreground image so the github avatar come in again however with the blend mode applied already in the fifth second i want to animate the blur of the stack overflow image of the background image and here again right this time we have a different curve we have a, a decelerate curve so it starts off really quickly changing the blur really quickly and then it slows down a lot and apply the image filter and we don't we don't even adjust the positions anymore. Then for one second, I don't want to do anything or actually for four seconds. So until second nine, I don't want to do anything. Uh, don't animate anything. And then in the last second, I want to make both of the images leave the view again. So this would be the animation. If we play it, you can see it started somewhere uh, in there because the time already elapsed, but here we go. So slide in, slide out, slide in, slide in, blur, do nothing, and then at the end, both fly out again. There we go. <laughs> so that's the whole animation. So this is the thing. And now I want to talk about a few things. First of all, tile mode. You have probably seen the image filter blur thing. You can also, also just use it in widgets, of course. Uh, in this case, I used it directly on the paint. And tile mode was just added recently. We can just see how this would look. And you can see it would kind of cut off the edges. This is basically the same as repeated in our case. Although not exactly. As you can see in repeated, because the images are repeated, we have some edges. I used mirror, I think. I could have just used clamp, to be honest. However, there is a slight difference, as you can see. Then we can talk about the blend mode. The default blend mode is sourced over, and this would just look like that. <laughs> So not very spectacular. And let's actually remove the blur because I think that's easy to see. So this is the basic setup. <laughs> it's pretty simple. I think the difference blend mode does so much for us because in combination with the blur, if we add that back, it kind of makes the background seem warped or something. And that's, that's kind of cool. I like how this turned out. <laughs> And if we take a look back at the animation, you might have not seen this concept of doing animations where you have different code blocks for different sections of time, basically. But I thought it was really nice to do here. And I actually think that doing it in a funvis was, at the end of the day, way easier. Obviously, the setup is not that great because if you use an image, all of this code is basically already done for you. But once it's done, it's fine. And also, if we close and reopen this, the images load immediately because they're added to the image cache. So that's no problem. So we technically don't even wait for this. The first frame already has the images loaded, which is pretty nice. So all in all, I think it's it turned out very nice as a funvis. And even with this concept, because if I had done it in widgets, I might have chained different animations and here i i have no state right using this concept there is no state every time this u function is called from scratch the only state is in my head because i know how the previous frame looked like and that's why i can for example execute this code block 
when there is no state, however, I know that the previous frame will be with t being almost one in this code block. So that's how that works. And I think that turned out pretty nicely. So thanks for watching me <laughs> recreate my logo. I hope that you were able to maybe take something away from this, learn something about the canvas animations and see how something like this can easily be recreated, right? I didn't even remember how I did it in Photoshop. However, I could just apply how it looked like to drawing with canvas and flutter. And that is what I think is pretty neat. So remember, you can learn anything creative creator, maybe not out.